Hello everybody, and welcome to my Cognex Insight Explorer software video. Today we're going to be going over the ins and outs of the Insight Explorer software, and how to connect it to your Logic PLC or any PLC, and how to download the tag database for the software to be compatible. First, we will be going over the Insight Explorer software. First, going off of my firmware version of 6.50, so the name doesn't look exactly right, it's probably because of that. Using the uh, Cognex Insight 5100 camera. Uh, you can see right there is the firmware version, the MAC address, the IP address, and then the serial number of the camera. This job right here is what I used for my last project for just looking at different barcodes, but we're going to go up to the file and start a new job. Or you can go back down to the get, uh, connected tab and then push new job. So we're going to push yes. And now we're in our new job. So first you want to get connected to your camera. Getting on the connect, get connected tab. I have a camera already, but it's not going to show anything on the network because I already have it connected. And then waiting for that pop up. There it is, saying that there's no other cameras on the network. Just turn that back down. If not, you can put it in manually using the IP, subnet, mask, the default gateway, DNS server, and the domain name of the camera if you have one. But since I already have one, I'm going to get out. Click on my Insight Fit to 100 camera, push connect, and there it is. So next we're going to be going over to set up an image to look for the object. This is how you trigger the camera, either through like an Ethernet or external or having a continuous where it's just taking triggers over and over again. I'm going to choose network and you can look at different things like the auto exposure and the lighting, stuff like that just to make the picture more clear so you can see your part more better, see the edges and stuff like that. I'm using network because I'm using it through a PLC. Next, going over to locate a part. Going over different patterns or uh, blobs. Stuff like that, looking for um, any thieving of a defect in the object and stuff like that. I'm going to be looking at edges, adding one right there. So it shows all the edges in the object itself. As you can see, it's kind of missing up there, so I need to adjust my lighting a little bit. I'm going to choose the left and the right one. First, choosing the right. Then going back over and adding another one. Then I'm going to add a blob just to look, to look at the object, looking for a pattern of a edge around the whole surface. You want to drag that out to make sure it's the size of your part you're looking for. I'm going to push OK. You see in the top right, it shows all that. All of my objects and the results of the object and then what the task is doing. You also have circle and uh, collaboration tools. Next, we're going to be going to inspecting the part. In here, you're going to find presence or absence, measurement tools, identification tools, geometry, math and logic, plot tools, image filter, defect detection, and calibration. First, we're going over the uh, presence or absence of an object. We're looking for the presence of the blob itself, looking if the object is there. Just make your area. See it pop up from the top right. So it is say that the object is present. Next, we're going to go down to the uh, distance on the measurement tools. Looking for the right length of the object to make sure uh, the right part is there. You just choose those two edges that you made it on the locating the part tool. And there it is. See how many pixels it is. I know I'm going over this kind of quickly, but I'm just kind of showing the basics of what you can do with finding an object. You can always dive deeper into yourself through the help tab, which I will show off later showing all the different ins and outs of it, or you can pause the video and look at the description of each one of the tools, going over each one right now. Because there is a lot to go over. Going over a super simple one here is a under the identification tools, it's the read ID codes. As you can see, as there is a barcode on the object itself that I'm making, that I use my vision project, as you can find on the SCADA YouTube channel. Here I am just plotting out the area. And then under the top right, it should say SCADA Pass for this barcode. And there it is. 
So if all of these are correct, then the part would be a pass. And then jumping over to the inputs and outputs here. I put the output and you can do these different things. So if there's a pass logic or a uh, fail logic, you can choose different signal types. So if you want it to be off of like the high or the low or when the, depending on when it triggers off to show that the show is a pass or if it's a fail. And we're gonna go in and select the ID code itself for the SCADA pass. So if it's a pass, it's a pass. You the force and look at the details. Showing if you want it to pulse. Then going down to the communication tab, since we're using a PLC, we're going to need to add a device. I'm using an Allen Bradley Control Logics PLC. To put PLC. I'm using a Rockwell Automation. And we're using Ethernet IP. So we're using the IP address of the camera to connect to it. And if you're using uh, input data, it doesn't really need to be put in for this one since we're using a PLC and it's be doing a different database. Going over into the format output data, we want to push add. Then just go over the ID code itself. And looking for that SCADA pass. We push OK. So you can see if it's a 1, it will be a pass value in the 16 bit integer. The film strip is where you're going to find all, like, all your snapshots of your triggers going forward and back, and then you can choose like different symbols, stuff like that. What you want it to show is how many you can have in the queue, if you want to stay with like, memory and stuff like that, and then where you want those images to be saved at. Now you're just going over to the save job, you can choose where you want to save it, and if you want to restore. I'm just going to call it something simple. And now you have our job saved. We're going to go into the run mode, we can go online with the job, push yes, and there it is. If communication and everything else is right, that part should turn green. Jumping in over to the communication side on the PLC. At first, when we go into the Ethernet and then click Add Device, but since I already have it here, I'm going to show it off in the Insta Explorer 5000. As you can see, it's series 5100. Looking for it, you can put in the type, so it's an Insight 5000 series vision uh, project. And then you go into Cognex. You can name it and then put the description whenever you want. The only thing you have to really change is make sure that revision is correct for your firmware of the camera, and then type in the IP address, and then you should be all good. And then here is some of the bits that I use in my program. So you have, if it's status online bit, you have to enable the trigger to make sure that you can use it on the PLC. So if the camera is online and the system is on, then you can choose the control trigger. And then seeing it down, you can see it in my program here that I have my fail count, my pass count, and then seeing that uh, set back from the camera as a pass or a fail count, as we just set up in the Insight Explorer. And what you're looking at here is the tag database that I downloaded from Cognex, as called an AOP. Here's all the status bits and the output bits and the input bits that are completely compatible with the software Insight Explorer, which went over. Here is the integration, and that download is just for like the document showing all of the uh, how to detect it to your PLC and all the like that, and what's all in it. It only works for firmware version 4 and 5, there are different versions on Cognex, and this is the AOP, which is the add-on profile version 1.28 that I use in my program you see here for my 5000 series. All I do is push that download, and I have a link down below. And if you did everything correctly, it should start working. You can start triggering from your PLC. If you need anything else, you can go always go into the Insight Explorer Help tab. Go into the spreadsheet view, easy builder view, function reference, communication reference, networking, and then how to for all the different tools you can use that I showed before. And then here's some troubleshooting. If you have any more questions, you can always go in there. 
And there you go, guys. This is my Insight Explorer software tutorial where we showed how to connect your Insight camera to the PLC and how to download the AOP tag list for the camera, which I will have links down below for you guys to download yourselves. And if you think I haven't missed anything, just leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching.